Good morning, Westside. I'm glad you're all out here on this beautiful Sunday morning. The Lord's blessed us with. As you notice, we got a few uh, stringed instruments up here. Today's going to be our guitar Sunday. Should call it like Picking and Grinning Sunday or Bluegrass Sunday, but we got some good old gospel songs to sing today. Uh, the first one, if you will stand, we'll do our opening. It's going to be a little bit slower than usual, but we're going to sing, Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessings on Me. As the world looks upon me, as I struggle alone, they say I have nothing. so sweet to hear you all sing in those words let's go to the Lord in prayer Lord we thank you for many many blessings so many we take for granted at times forgive us oh Lord you've been awful good to us and Lord we rejoice in that today we thank you Lord that even in the darkest hours of our life you are ever present you're ever working you're ever speaking you're ever comforting. And Lord, we come today together to draw strength from you. And so God, I would ask that everything that is said and done and prayed and sung today will be to glorify and honor your name. And as it is, Lord, as praises go up, that blessings will come down and that you will most definitely speak to each person in some way today and encourage them in their journey. Lord, we need you. We desperately need you each and every day. We thank you for being a God who never leaves nor forsakes your people. And we ask these things in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ and all of his children said together, amen. amen.
beautiful singing already starting this morning. Let me get our my little hymnal slipped to the right page here. If you will stand, we'll start with our next hymn, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Roy, will you flip it on the chorus for just a second? Now you men with those deep bass voices, you see those brackets right there? That's where we're going to that's where you're gonna be singing. Alan's gonna help us out with it, but we'll we'll kick it off here and we'll start with the first verse. So go ahead. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It laid my heart in love and broke my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now, men. Have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn in, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past seems drear without a ray of cheer. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn and I and you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. Have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Amen, amen. Y'all sound beautiful this morning. Next hymn we have for today be our little slower one it will be blessed assurance and man if you will kick us off there blessed assurance Jesus is Thank you. 
will come forward at this time as always I want to thank you for your giving spirit for supporting the Lord's work not only here and within these walls but also uh, throughout our state throughout our nation and really throughout our world you're giving church and I'm so blessed to just be a part of it thank you Heavenly Father, we thank you again for all that you have supplied. And now, Lord, as we come to a time of worship where we give a, just a small fraction back to you, we could never repay you, Lord, and you don't ask us to, but you ask us to join you in your redeeming work. And so, God, I would ask that you would take uh, this money that is gathered today and has been gathered this week and the next week, Lord, and that you would bless the gift multiply it, and allow us to share the name of Jesus Christ, draw people unto yourself. And Lord, I also ask that you would bless the giver, the one giving with faith, the one giving with duty and joy today. Lord, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Now you see it says special music in the title of it says I've never been sorry in the hymnal. I meant to turn that to a congregational, but I'm going to have you all sit and if you all show the screen. All right, so can we go to the chorus real quick? I want to run through the chorus. I'm going to have half the congregation sing what's unbracketed, the other half sing what is bracketed. So when we go, I've never been sorry, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. That, he, that I trusted his name. Blessed holy name. Every moment I find him. Always. 
He's exactly the same. He's exactly the same. My soul has been singing every day since the Savior came. Since the Savior came. I've never been sorry that I trusted his name. His holy name. So this side is the bracketed side. This side is the unbracketed side. Okay? We're going to try this. I, love, I, I found this hymn this week, and it's, it's just... It's an amazing hymn because within the words of it, it just talks about how we may be regretful of many things, but we're never regretful of accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So let's kick it off. Okay. <laughs> Ever since Jesus saved and pardoned, I have been singing every day. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord. That I trusted His name. Dark shadow, he is with me, leading me on the upward way. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord that I trusted his name. Blessed holy name. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord that I trusted his blessed name. holy name. Every moment I find him all the way. He's exactly the same. He's exactly the same. My soul has been singing every day since the Savior came. Since the Savior came. Never been sorry. Praise the Lord. That I trusted his name. Blessed holy okay. name. All the day long I sing the story, praising him for his wondrous love. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord. That I trusted his name. Blessed holy name. Surely I know a home is waiting. Beautiful home in heaven above. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord. That I trusted his name. Blessed holy name. Sorry, praise the Lord that I trusted His name. blessed holy name. Every moment I find Him, all the way, He's exactly the same. He's exactly the same. My soul has been singing every day since the Savior came. Since the Savior came, I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord that I trusted His name. blessed holy name. Brightly the star of hope is shining, making the pathway brighter grow. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord that I trusted His name. Blessed holy name. Never a thought of sad repining. Jesus is with me. This I know. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord that I trusted His name. Blessed holy name. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord that I trusted His name. Blessed holy name. Every moment I find Him, all the way, He's exactly the same. He's exactly the same. My soul has been singing every day since the Savior came. Since the Savior came, I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord that I trusted His name. Blessed Let's go one more verse. Let's go one more chorus on there. Let's sing that chorus one more time. Sing it out now. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord that I trusted His name. Blessed Holy Name. Every moment I. All the way, he's exactly the same. He's exactly the same. My soul has been singing every day since the Savior came. Since the Savior came, I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord that I trusted His name. Blessed holy name. Amen. Give yourself a round of applause on that. One. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Y'all sound the best today. Thank you guys as well for playing the strings. Uh, it's such a joy to be here this morning and to have you all with us. Thankful for this time God has given us together this morning. I'm going to ask you, if you will, to turn with me in your copy of God's Word to the Gospel of Luke in chapter 8. And we're going to read verses 26 through 35. Luke chapter 8, 26 through 35. I'd like to share the thought with you this morning on this Lord's Day about sitting at Jesus' feet. This is the story about how Jesus heals a man with a demon. And the Bible says, Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. 
When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. And then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. May God bless the reading of his word today. What a scene this story puts in our minds. It's very vivid. And, you know, as we just focus on those words, they found the man sitting at the feet of Jesus. Wouldn't it be interesting to know what Jesus and the once demon-possessed man were talking about? What was Christ uh, telling him at this point, now that he had been freed spiritually, but also mentally and physically from the grasp of the demonic? How did he get here? We really don't know. But we know at this point, he'd been set free. And there they found him clothed and in his right mind, sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ. On that day, this man physically, literally sat at the feet of Jesus. But spiritually, we would assume that he consistently visited the feet of Jesus in his thoughts and in his spiritual devotion throughout his remaining years. I thought this week that that is really, I believe, a snapshot of the genuine Christian. To sit at the feet of Jesus is a statement that also holds practical implications for what the Christian's life should be, that we take time throughout our life, like you are today, to sit at the feet of Jesus. We should still be found there, amen? No matter how long it's been since we were set free, no matter how long it's been since we first heard the name of Jesus and received him as Lord and Savior, but throughout our life as a Christian, Life should find us, people should find us, as they find you this morning, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now, if that statement still holds value, and I believe that it does for all of us today, what does it mean for us to sit at the feet of Jesus? First, I think to sit at the feet of Jesus is an expression of love, an expression of gratitude towards Jesus Christ for what he has done in your life. You're thankful. We sang about that earlier. We're thankful for what he has done for us. We rejoice in what his, that his presence is ever with us. Simply put, I, I don't think a person that or I think a person that has not been freed from the grip of the evil one will not sit at the feet of Jesus, the feet of the Lord. But for the one that has been set free will be grateful to some degree or another, and they will love the Lord for his very grace and mercy that has been shed upon their life, and they will take time in their life, weekly, yes, but even so much more than weekly, 
They will take time out of gratitude and love to sit at Jesus' feet. This man's life in every way had been changed. Every way. And he simply wanted to be close to the one that had delivered him, which was Jesus the Christ. When Jesus saves us, we too have been made new. We are a new creation. And like this man, uh, one that has truly been free will not mind showing humility and be found sitting at the feet of Jesus, at the feet of the one who has rescued us from sin from ourselves, from death, and from eternal judgment. Jesus has freed us from the bondage of all of those through his power. You know, when we love someone, we want to be close to them. We want to be close to them, if at all possible, in any way that we can. And really, it is no different for the one whose life has been touched by the Master. As we love Jesus, we will desire to sit with him and to sit at his feet and learn from him. The changed life, the one that has been born again, will, will desire to express also as we have today in worship. But again, not only today, but each day of our life in some way will have a desire to express that love and that gratefulness to Jesus Christ. Loving Jesus is really no different than loving any human. The truth is this, you cannot force love and gratefulness, can you? It is either there or it's not. But you cannot make a person love another person. It will happen spont spontaneously when there is love. You see, the Christian loves Jesus Christ because he has first loved them and has come to rescue them from dangers and eternal harm. And to the true Christian, love and gratefulness should come naturally. We desire again to be close to him and in our spiritual disciplines, it won't be a tiring and, and laborsome burden to us. Yes, I understand. I'm like you as well. There are times that we become or allow ourselves to become sidetracked uh, or de deceived in our spiritual life or temporar temporarily distracted with other desires. But eventually, the saved person, the one that's been redeemed, the one that's been rescued, always returns to Jesus without having to be chained in order to sit at his feet, they will gladly take their place there. God has given us so much through Jesus Christ. The least that we can do is give unto the Lord a loving and grateful heart. Amen? The least we can do for the one that has redeemed our very souls, our very life, each day is show our love and gratitude towards him. Really, when you say a selfish and ungrateful Christian, that's an oxymoron that really doesn't make any sense. Dave Hunt said this, that the father and son would love sinners that much is beyond our comprehension, but it ought to awaken a response of love and gratitude within our hearts that will change our lives forever. Beloved, that's one way that it means to sit at the feet of Jesus is to take time to express, express our love to him and to show forth our gratitude to Jesus Christ. Psalm 92 and 4, the psalmist wrote, For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work at the work of your hands I sing for joy just as you don't have to teach a bird to sing and so that should be the life of the Christian that loves the Lord and is grateful unto the Lord 
for his or her many blessings. And so what does it mean to sit at the feet of Jesus? Well, it means to come to him and express our love and show our gratitude to him in a number of ways. But it also means that you find a place of safety for your life. Yes, to sit at the feet of Jesus means that at his feet you find a place of safety for your life. Again, in the story, the man had been set free from his tormentors, but you think about it, what guarantee did he have at that point that they would not return? He felt safe at that moment, being at the feet of the one who had freed him. The truth is, again, that all believers uh, should feel the same way, that it is close to Jesus where we find safety for our lives. Now, listen, this, I personally don't believe that a Christian who has been sealed with the Holy Spirit can be possessed by the demonic, but, but, a Christian most certainly can still be greatly oppressed by malevolent spirits. And I give that as a warning not only to myself, but to all of us today, that the less that we stay at the feet of Jesus, the more susceptible we make ourselves for attack. The less we stay at the feet of Jesus, the more susceptible we are for demonic attack upon our lives. Oppression. There are still many things that even the Christian that has been saved and sealed can lose in this world. Don't think that we can't for a minute. And if we get too far away from the feet of Jesus daily in our lives, we come, become susceptible for attack by the evil one, and we can still lose our confidence. Even though we're saved, we can still lose our confidence. Satan doesn't want you to have confidence in who you are in Christ. We can still lose a great amount of joy. We can still lose a peace. We can still lose vitality and beloved if we get too far away from the feet of Jesus and become too heavily oppressed and fall into sin, even though we're saved, we can lose our testimony. And when you lose your testimony, I promise you as a Christian, you do then also lose your joy and your peace and your comfort. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 2 and 4, we read of David's song of deliverance that he gave towards the end of his life. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. You save me from violence. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. David knew, one, he knew how to fall into sin, but two, he knew that his safe place was in a right relationship with the Lord. The formerly possessed man knew who had delivered him and that it was by the heavenly divine power of Jesus Christ and not by anything that he had done himself. And he was clinging to Jesus Christ like a child would their mother or father. Beloved, simply if it is Jesus that has saved your soul, that has given you hope, that has rescued you from damnation, then it is Jesus that will keep you safe. Amen? Amen. It is Jesus that will provide you with a spiritual shelter in the storms of life. And we do have those. It is Jesus that will protect us from the traps set by the tempter and from the dangerous, very dangerous influence of the world. 
I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how wise you might think that you are or how settled uh, you might think that you are. But there is never a point that we as Christians reach in our lives on this side of heaven that we do not need the protection and safety that comes only through being near the Lord. There's never a point in our life. I don't care if we're teenagers or if we're 100. There's never a point in our life where a Christian does not need the protection of the Lord on their lives. The strength of the Lord. The courage that comes through the Lord. And today we've got to ask ourselves. Now seriously, I, I know you're here this morning, but where is your place of safety? Now, you know the answer to that. But the answer is really revealed in have you sat at the feet of Jesus this week, honestly? Or have you handled things on your own? Or are you waiting for the newscaster to tell you if it's safe to come out yet or not? Or really, where do you find your safety from? The closer we stay to Jesus, the more safe we stay, and then the more at peace that we are, even while the battles of life rage around us. I look back at Miss Helen today. I'm so thankful Miss Helen and Wayne are back with us. She had a bad spill and cut her head back through here, took 19 staples just uh, a week ago yesterday, wasn't it, Helen? Am I right? It was a week ago yesterday you fell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But Miss Helen at the hospital, they were uh, they were surprised at how at peace she was with her head being sliced open and putting staples in it. She says it could have been worse. It could have been worse. God was with me. What a testimony! What a testimony to people at the hospital, to other that were around. It could have been worse. God was with me. The old saying states, uh, it's a jungle out there, and it is. It is a jungle out there. And by that out there, I mean the world. It's a jungle out there with many dangers, and a soldier must always stay in close communications with their base. And so the Christian also must stay near the feet of Jesus so they will not become a casualty of the spiritual war that is happening around us even now. If we stay too far from the feet of Jesus, again, the tempter is close by and his traps are set. He wants to rob you of your peace and your joy, your confidence, your testimony, your very, the very vitality of your life he wants to rob you of. He knows that you belong to the Lord and he cannot change that. He still wants to rob you of your life. To sit at the feet of Jesus not only means that you're expressing love and gratitude towards the one that has redeemed you, but it also means that you find a place of safety for your life. You know deep down you cannot get through this life without the Lord and his blessings, and you don't want to. You don't want to. That's what sitting at the feet of Jesus means. But also to sit at the feet of Jesus means that you desire to be taught by him. Hear my words. You, you desire to be taught by Jesus Christ, to, to listen. There's a desire in your soul to listen, and to learn, and to grow in your Christian life. That's what this man that had now been freed by the demonic was doing. That's why I said it'd be so interesting to know exactly what Jesus was telling them. 
Life is not all about just about who you love and what you're grateful for. It's not just about where you find safety and shelter, but life is all about is also about whose words you listen to for instruction for navigating the troubled waters of life. See, the truth is this. Theoretically, we are all sitting at someone or some people's feet for instruction about life. You're already doing that. We all listen to someone or some people in some way, shape, form, or fashion. In all honesty with yourself and the Lord this morning, uh, I ask you to contemplate your walk with the Lord and answer the question of whose feet have you been at the most this week listening for the voice. It's somebody or something or some people or it's the Lord. The freed man in the story, he, we know a little later on down the verses we didn't read, but many of us know this story well. And we, we know that he asked to go with Jesus. Let me go with you. He was ready to follow Jesus wherever he went. But the Lord refused him. Jesus told him to return home and to tell those at home how much that God had done for him. You know that's always where it starts. Is at the home. Always starts at the home. We might assume that physically uh, this man might not have ever sat at the feet of Jesus again physically at that time in his life. However, spiritually, he most likely continued to do that for the rest of his life. There are different ways that we gather to hear from the Lord or ways that he speaks. You can hear God speak to you through nature. You can hear him speak through certain life events things he allows or things that he doesn't or uh, uh, life events that happen that teach you how to become better and stronger. He speaks through life events. He speaks through worship and the words that we sing today. He's speaking to us through them. He speaks through the Holy Spirit, of course, that each saved born-again believer has. He also speaks through others that are being led of the Holy Spirit. But not everybody that says they're being led of the Holy Spirit really are being led of the Holy Spirit. So it's got uh, to be grounded somewhere. So, but the clearest and most consistent way to hear God speak is through the Bible, through God's Word. And everything else is, is either going to line up with the Bible and it's true, or if it doesn't, it's not what you need. But to hear God through any of these channels, it takes time. It takes time. It, it takes patience. And I tell you, it takes persistence as well. But I want to remind you today that God does speak. And He's speaking to you if you will hear Him. If you'll take time to sit and listen for His voice. God is speaking to each and every one of us. He's still teaching people that will come and gather and sit at his feet if we will but take time to find ourselves at his feet listening for his voice. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, Paul wrote to Timothy, But as for you, continue in what you have learned, and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation. That's what the Word of God is there for. In a nutshell, the Bible is there to make us wise for salvation. Now this isn't just speaking about the justification that comes when we're saved, but talking about so many of the ways that we are saved from troubles and trials in this life. And we need God's Word to guide us through that. And to do that, we have to make ourselves available to sit at the feet of Jesus and to listen for His voice. You know, I think we too often, uh, we take little time in our lives to listen to God and 
in different ways. And then when a major event comes up or a major life decision springs up, here's what we hear many times. We start asking for a sign. Oh, God, give me a sign. Now, there are times that God does give clear signs. But more times than not. We read of these marvelous stories in, in the Bible and we assume that God's going to, you know, uh, catch us up in the whirlwind like Elisha. But uh, many days and hours and weeks and months and sometimes years would go by before God would speak in a certain particular, specific, unique way that he did to people in the Bible. More times than not, we don't get the sign we're looking for. I know I've used this as an illustration before, but uh, as a young man, I would pray the day that report cards were coming out, Lord, please change that grade before mom and dad sees it. But what would have been better? If I'd have been paying attention and being a good student for the last nine weeks, I wouldn't be worried and asking for some miraculous thing on this day. And it never happened. I changed it once, but I got found out. A good D is hard to make it look like a B. I think we too many times take little time to listen to God, and then when something happens, we, we expect him to come up with this big sign to give us peace, and we've robbed our own selves of peace for weeks days and years not sitting at the feet of Jesus. And by the way, that could be the reason we're in that jam at that point. And don't blame God for all of it. I, I remember a guy years ago, I've not seen him in years, but every time I talked to him, I kept trying to encourage him, oh, God's whipping me, God's whipping me, God's whipping me. And, and there was finally a time, is it God whipping you or do you just keep making dumb mistakes and blaming it on God? The great thing is, is that I believe that the more we spend at Jesus' feet throughout our life, the less that we really think that we need these earth-shattering signs to direct us. Because we've been sitting there daily. And beloved, here's the great thing. Here's the great thing that Jesus turns no one away who wants to learn from him. He's never turned a person away that really wants to know him, to be saved by him, to learn from him. Jesus turns no one away. There is not a person in hell that will be able to say, Jesus turned me away. Not one. Yes, to sit at his feet means that we are expressing love and gratitude. To sit at his feet means that we want to learn from him. To sit at his feet means that we find a great place of safety there. And so the person that does sit at the feet of Jesus is very much grateful to Jesus. But what about the person that doesn't sit at the feet of Jesus? Or at least, maybe it's been too long since you've been at the feet of Jesus. Well, I think the opposite would, would show that, that they don't express love and gratitude in their lives toward God, and then that affects even our relationships this way as well. When this is off, eventually it affects the relationships here. Doesn't it? A person that shows no love or gratitude in their lives a person that is always trying to find shade and shelter and safety in the things of the world, the next new thing. They're always trying to find something to settle their soul or their spirit, to give them some sense of peace, some sense of joy in their life. They're always searching for the next new thing. And simply put, you can tell a person has not been at the feet of Jesus 
or it's been a long time, if they don't express any desire, any urgency, any motivation to really hear from the Lord, to be obedient to his teachings and to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. A person that has no desire to at times sit with other believers and, and learn in a small group setting or even by yourself, and both are important, by the way. A person that says, I don't need that stuff. You're robbing yourself of precious time of sitting at his feet. But worse than that, you're in danger. You're in danger because your pride and egotism is about to lead you down a path that is not God's will for your life. And for the person that has no love or gratitude in their lives or very little, or they're always trying to find safety in the things of the world, uh, who's in office, who's out of office, what bill's going to be passed, is that where they're trying to find some joy? And simply put, they don't express any desire, any urgency, any motivation to really hear from the Lord or to be obedient to his teachings or to grow in grace. I want to remind you today that that is not God's will for your life. It's not. Jesus is still saving, Jesus is still blessing, Jesus is still healing, and he is still teaching people. He's still freeing people from the bondage of the demonic, the curse of sin. He's still freeing us from the curse of death, and he's still giving us victory over the world through our faith. And so I ask you today as we prepare to come to a close of this service, would you Maybe you, who have never publicly received Jesus Christ as your Savior, would you spiritually come to his feet today and receive him as your personal Lord and Savior? He will not reject you. He will not reject you. Would you, Christian, express your love and your gratitude for him? I want to remind all of you today, if you are here and listening, which you are, you have not gone beyond his ability to heal you. Would you, Christian, express your love and gratitude for what he's done for you? Would you today see that the safest place to find yourself in this life is at the feet of Jesus in the will of God? at the feet of Jesus and the will of God. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Would you hide yourself in Jesus today? Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us. And Lord, we know through your word that it's not your will or your desire that any should die and perish separated from your benevolent hand. And so God, stir our hearts, shake our spirits, O oh Lord. Help each person here, including myself, Lord, to find our safety, our rest in thee. Save, heal, Lord, today. Pull us back to your feet again. Even with your church, Lord, that we won't try to find our, our successes in the next new big thing or the next program, but, Lord, that we'll find our success by sitting at your feet together. Gather us there right now, O oh Lord and speak to us in Jesus name Amen as we stand and sing this hymn of invitation I will be down front the altar is open for you to receive Jesus Christ for you to rededicate your life to you to follow through in some obedient way that he has been speaking to you for a while maybe you just need to come to the altar and thank him Take just a moment and thank him for all he's done for you and express your love to him. Whatever it might be, you just be obedient as we sing together.